will turn into praise. I'll shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. I'll shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment. Come on, all of my fear, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Show me one thing he can do. Show. begin to lift up your hands this morning and let's worship the Lord in this place he is worthy to be praised he alone deserves our praise this morning Worthy is your name. 
Open up the gates, let heaven 
Worship Him. You're all we want. You're all we want. You're all we want. Oh, you're all we want, Lord. You're all we want. Yes, Jesus. You're all we want. You're all we want. That's it. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, I'm here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me come down. Yes, Jesus. Yes, just lift up your hands to heaven. Hallelujah, Jesus. And just begin to worship the Lord all over this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Come on, just begin to lift up the name of Jesus here this morning. Just begin to elevate your worship here this morning. Just begin to lift up the name of Jesus. Begin to lift up your voice this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The song said, I know you can feel me. Just begin to lift up your hands and just begin to worship the Lord with faith that there's nothing impossible with Him. Hallelujah, God. I know you can feel me, Lord. I know you can feel me, Jesus. I know you can change me, Lord. I know you can work it out for me, Lord God. I know I got the victory in you, Jesus, and I lift up my voice with faith and worship. Come on, worship Him with confidence this morning. Worship Him with confidence here this morning. He'll never let you down. Oh, yes. You're a powerful God. You're a loving God. Oh, I know it, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just take a moment just to lift your hands and talk to Jesus. Yes, Lord. He can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you can do it, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just take a moment. Just put your mind on Jesus. Put your mind on God. He can do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He can do it. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. Oh, we lift up your holy name, Lord God. May you rest on us. Give us your peace and your strength. Give us the victory, Lord God. Prepare us, Lord God. You have a word for us this morning, Lord. And we want to take this time of worship, God, to worship you, to soften the soil of our heart as we prepare for the word you have for us. Oh, we know you can do it, Lord. Come rest on us, Lord God. Rest on your people. Let the power of your Holy Ghost, Lord God, fan the flames, Lord God, the gifts of God in this house. Meet needs here this morning, Lord God. Meet needs, Lord God. Begin to fill what is empty. Begin to strengthen what is weak. We know you can do it, Lord. But we lift up your name right now, Lord God. We, we, you're a great God. You're an awesome God. You're a powerful God. We love you here this morning. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give Jesus a good, good hand of praise. Come on, if you're filled with the Holy Ghost here this morning. Come on, if you know the joy of the Lord is your strength here this morning. Come on, if you, you know that you know that you're praising and worshiping a God that is alive, that is not dead. Can you shout his name? Who did you come to praise? Who's going to work it all out? Who do you love? Give him one more good hand of praise here this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you feel Jesus here this morning? Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask if those are, that are at the stage, you can go ahead and make your way back to your seats. And everybody, you can be seated here this morning. 
And once again, on behalf of the whole entire Victory Outreach Imperial Valley family, we would like to take this time to welcome each and every one of you here to, for coming to our Sunday celebration service. All of you viewing there on Facebook Live and YouTube, we want to take this time to welcome all of our online viewers here this morning. Praise the Lord. And if you're visiting here for the first time, once, uh, once again, we just would like to thank you for choosing Victory Outreach Imperial Valley as your place of worship on a beautiful Sunday morning. And here here on the LED screen, there on the TV screens, there's a QR code for all those visiting for the first time. You can pull out your device. You can put it on picture mode. You can scan that QR code. It'll send you directly, directly to our directory. You can fill out your information. If you have any prayer requests, you can put your prayer requests. This is a place where we can continue to connect with you and keep you updated with all the exciting things that are happening here. We have something for the whole entire family here at Victory Outreach Imperial Valley. And for all of our first-time visitors, visitors after you fill that out you after the service stop by our first time visitors booth we have a special gift for you for all those visiting for the first time praise the lord and this morning we have a few announcements here this morning we know that our youth are going to get ready to go to winter retreat this week they'll be going to winter retreat Praise the Lord. So they'll be gathering here in Victory Outreach. We're not just a local family. We have a family all over the world. And many, many are gathering there at Hume Lake, there in the Fresno, Northern California area. And we're taking over 30 young people, or 30 young people that are going to be going. Yes, let's give Jesus a good, good hand. They'll be going to the mountaintop. But there's going to be, uh, for all of the parents, there's going to be a meeting immediately after the service here here in the front rows of the seats here with our third wave leaders. There's going to be a meeting. There's, a, there's some very important information that you need. So we want to accommodate you. And if you have any concerns or questions, we can accommodate you with all the information for your young person. That's going to be taking place immediately after the service. Amen. And every Sunday we have our 1 o'clock Spanish service. Let's continue to evangelize. Let's continue to reach out to our Spanish-speaking community and let them know that Jesus loves them. We have a Sunday service every Sunday at 1 p.m. Amen. And uh, in the month of November, we are now in the month of December. Praise the Lord. We are closing out 2023. Praise God. And we know in the month of De in November, every Wednesday night, we gather here in the house of God for a time of worship and prayer. We had a powerful, powerful time. And now it's in the month of December where we're going to be doing every Wednesday night. We're we're going to be gathering in our different life groups. Amen. We're going to be gathering in our different life groups. For more information on life groups, we want to encourage you to get connected to a life group. We have life groups taking place here in the city of El Centro. We have life groups there in the city of Imperial. We have life groups also in the city of Brawley. Life groups for the whole entire family. If you're a life group leader in the sanctuary, just quickly lift up your hand. We have different life groups. There's some hands going up. You want more information, you can see me or any of our life groups to get you connected to a life group that's going to be happening every Wednesday night, every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And then we have a midweek uh, Spanish service here in the sanctuary every Wednesday night. The Spanish will be gathering here in the house of the Lord every Wednesday. We want to encourage you to get connected to a life group that's going to be taking place every Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, Thursday night, for all the couples, we're going to be having our couples dinner. Amen. We've been anticipating and we've been very, very excited for our couples dinner with special guest evangelist Zeke Rodriguez and his wife. He's going to be ministering the word of God. God uses them. Yes, let's get excited for that. Are the couples excited for that? Amen. If you're a couple here and if you haven't signed up, I want to let you know it's not too late to sign up. You can sign up right after the service with my beautiful wife, Sister Jessica. She's going to be back there. You can sign up with her after the service if you haven't signed up. It's going to be a powerful, powerful time. What a great time where we can invest in our marriage, invest in our relationships. Amen. We know that there's some couples that are married. There's also some couples that are engaged. They're getting ready. They're getting so they're starting early with their investment. Praise the Lord. I, I give them. You know, let's give them a good, good hand. Praise God. But that's, we're going to be all gathering uh, this Thursday night. Thursday night, there's a $30 uh, investment there. You're going to get a nice steak delicious steak or chicken dinner of your choice. So we're going to come. We're going to get the word of God. We're going to be having a nice dinner. There's going to be some breakthroughs in our marriages. Praise the Lord. Get ready couples. There's going to be some. How many expecting some breakthroughs in our marriage? Praise God. That's, so that's also going to be happening this Thursday here in the house of the Lord. And it's going to be starting at 7 p.m. 
a.m. So don't mark your calendars, couples. You don't want to miss out, and it's not too late to sign up. And Friday nights, we're back here in the house of the Lord for our Friday night service. And we also know that this is a season. You see our Christmas, beautiful Christmas decorations up. And as a church, every year we gather for our for our Christmas dinner. Amen. And that's going to be on December the 17th. That's just a couple of weeks away. That's going to be a Sunday night. Sunday night at 6 p.m. We're going to have a great program. We're all going to come as a church family. And we extend the invitation. You can invite your families as well. There's going to be food for everyone. We're going to be gathering here at 6 p.m. For more information on that, you can see uh, Sister Patty. You can see Sister Vanessa or any of the leaders after the service. For more information, we're going to have a nice, nice dinner, a great program. Just a time for as a church family, we can come together. Amen. How many know we're not just an army of the Lord? But we are also a family here at Victory Outreach. Praise God. And it's a beautiful time. Our Christmas dinners are always a special, special time when we come together. So we extend the invitation to all of you and also all of you that are online. Praise God. Is anybody blessed here this morning? God is a good God. We're going to get ready to honor the Lord in the area of giving on to the Lord. Also, all those watching on Facebook Live, YouTube, this is also an opportunity for you to give on to the Lord. There's different ways that you and I can give on to the Lord. You can pull out your device. We have our QR code there on the LED screen. We have it there on the TV screens. You pull out your device. You can scan that QR code. It'll take you directly to the link where you can fill out your information. You can text the, uh, the word GIVE to 760 one nineteen ninety nine. 1999 you can give also in that manner or you can also go to our church website go to our church website you search victory outreach imperial valley you can give online you can give through paypal as well if you're here you want to give in person in form of an envelope i'm going to ask the guardians with the envelopes to go ahead and take their place here this morning and this morning if you need a tithing envelope an offering envelope united we can envelope as the guardians make their way you can just go ahead and lift up your hand here today we know that we made our chair pledge this month our chair pledge is coming in we made a goal by friday december the first which was this past friday this past friday but maybe you weren't here this past friday and you're here this morning and you want to fulfill your pledge here this morning you want to give towards your pledge you can also do that do so and we are very very excited for our church chairs our brand new chairs that are going to be coming here this month any day they'll be here and before you know it we'll be sitting here on a nice beautiful brand new chair so we praise god for for all those that sold and fulfilled their pledge that gave towards our church pledge but we can also do that as well but the bible says what to give the bible says to bring the tithing 10 percent of everything that god blesses us with the word of god says that it's holy it belongs to god so when we give our lives to god God, we, uh, we go by his word. He orders our steps. The word of God says, bring your tithing and your offerings to the house of the Lord, to the storehouse, which is Victory Outreach in Pira Valley. This is our church. This is our storehouse. This is where we bring our tithes and our offerings on to the Lord. We have a mission to reach the world. We have united we can. Those are the different ways according to the word of God. And here in Victory Outreach, we are a Bible-believing church we believe in the word of god the whole bible when it comes to giving on to god we believe in the word of god when it comes to giving on to the lord because he is a faithful faithful god are we ready to give here this morning god loves a cheerful giver so as you stand you get your giving ready i want you to smile on to the lord because he is the one that gave you the strength for it and what we're going to do is we're going to pray and after we pray, you can bring your giving to the basket. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your presence, Lord God. We thank you for your faithfulness and the faithfulness of your givers, Lord God. We pray for the tithes, the offerings, God, those fulfilling their pledges, Lord God. Every seed that is sown, Lord God, may it continue to bring glory to your, your name and advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say amen. God bless you as you give this morning.
give me a loud hallelujah. You give me a loud praise, oh Lord. Does anybody love Jesus in this place? Give somebody a high five and tell them it's good to have him with us this Sunday morning. Amen. Praise God. Is anybody happy? Praise you, Jesus. Is anybody excited? Praise God. You guys got to clap once in a while. Give a loud hallelujah. Give a loud praise the Lord. I know sometimes we come to service, sometimes there's a quiet spirit, sometimes there's an exciting spirit, sometimes there's a radical spirit. I think today was a little quiet. I know during these holidays it's because we're eating a lot, man. I know I was on a diet, I broke my diet. Right now this thing just popped up. I sat down and pop. I told Gene I've been eating, I've been, I've been trying to get back on my diet. Ever since Thanksgiving came and I broke my diet. Not only me, some of you too. I know Joey takes a little slower getting up. <laughs> Praise God. But how many know that we still got to bring excitement to the house? Some of us are a little full on the tanks, but we still got to bring a loud hallelujah, a loud pray, bring excitement to the house of the Lord. So we got any excited people? So as I get in this message, man, don't get too quiet on me. Don't get too quiet. There you go. Come on, let's give the Lord a good hand. Praise God. Give me a loud hallelujah. hallelujah. Give it a praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give somebody a double five. Come on, let's have church this morning. Hey, I'm going to dismiss the band and the singers. And as you remain standing, we're going to read the scriptures, and I'm going to have you sit down. Book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 22 to 34. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 22, all the way to 34. We're going to read it, we're going to pray, we're going to sit, and then we're going to get into the word, amen? And the Bible says, The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and to be beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the, jailer, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and at once all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. And the jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew the sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We, were all, we are all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in and fell trembling before them and Paul and Silas. And he, he brought to them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. You and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in the house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. And then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house, set a meal before them, and he was filled with joy. Say with me, filled with joy. Because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Amen. I want everyone to go ahead and sit, get, take a seat this morning. And this morning, I'm going to speak to you about overcoming trials. Overcoming trials. Overcoming tribulations. And what's the definition, the definition of a trial? It's any, a trial is, it could be a test. It could be a problem. It could be a trouble. You know, every, every trouble, every trial, and every temptation that we go through, they actually become tests in our lives. Sometimes the tests come from God. Sometimes God tests us. Sometimes they come from our own humanity, just being a human being in this world. And sometimes they can also come from Satan. So whenever we're going through trials, tribulations, and temptations, they come from three sources. You know, sometimes, you know, God, you know, will allow us to go through something to test our motives, to test our faith. Sometimes things happen in life. How many know sometimes things happen in life and we have no control of? You know, we could lose a loved one. Someone could pass away. You know, there could be an accident. There could be a loss of job. There could be a lack of finances. Sometimes things just happen, happen 
you know, living in life, you know, being a human being. And then sometimes they also come from Satan. They come from the devil. Sometimes the devil just comes and gives us a hard time. Has the devil ever tried to give anybody a hard time? I know he has with me. He comes and bothers me sometimes. Sometimes my flesh tries to get the best of me. And yes, sometimes God allows me to go through something just to test me. When the Lord allows us to go through trials, he allows us, when, he, when, he allow, when God allows us to go through trials, it's because he's testing our faith, he's testing our obedience, and he's testing our patience. Say patience. patience. Sometimes we go through things because God wants us to learn to be patient, especially when he don't answer our prayers right away. How many know that God's a God that answers our prayers? How many guys believe that God's a God that answers our prayers? Sometimes he don't pray him when we want him to pray. We, we, he don't answer him. We don't answer our prayers when we want him to answer. It. And the reason he hasn't answered our prayers is because he wants us to learn to be patient. He wants us to learn to wait upon him and to trust in him and to continue to go forward even in the midst of our trials and tribulation. One thing I know about a test from God is when the God's test comes, we got to learn to pass the test. How many can say hallelujah? How do you pass a test with God? You learn to be still. You learn to be patient. You learn to trust in him. You learn to believe in him. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't stay behind. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. No, stay in God's perfect will. Stay in God's perfect plan. And before you know it, the test is going to go by. Then the blessing is going to come. But what happens when we flunk God's test, when we get ahead of God and things don't go well, we stay behind and things don't go well, we go to the right and to the left and things don't go well? Well, when we flunk the test, thank God that God loves us so much that he's going to allow us to go through the test again. Until we get it right. How many can say hallelujah? So my message for you here this morning is that I want you to learn how to go through trials and tribulations so that you can get it right. I want you to learn to get it right. You know why I want you to learn to get it right? Because I believe that 2024, God is going to do some amazing things. God is going to do some great things. For us as individuals, and even for us as a ministry and as a church. And I believe that if we're going to get into miracle territory, if we're going to go into a place of, of, of more than enough, how many guys ready to go to the land of milk and honey? Are we ready to cross that Red Sea? Are we ready to cross that Jordan? Are we ready to get to the promised land? Are we ready to conquer those cities? Are we ready to take the land that God has given us? The only way it's going to happen is that we learn to be victorious. We need some victorious people that are ready to go forward. Are we ready to be victorious? And if you don't feel victorious this morning, I pray that after this message, you learn to get victorious. You know, I'm trying to, I want to get victorious this whole month. I want to dedicate it and just get a hold of God because, man, I just want to break into 2024 and do everything that God has called me to do. What about you? Look at somebody and say, what about you? You ready to go forward? How many of us are ready to go forward? Well, the only way we're going to learn to go forward is that we got to learn how to overcome our trials. We got to learn how to overcome our trials. So I'm going to give you four points this morning of learning how to overcome your trials. First point is learn, your, learn to turn your morning into joy. Learn to turn your morning into joy. Now, look at the story we read right now about Paul, Silas, boy. You know, Paul and Silas. God told Paul and Silas to go to Macedonia. And then they go to Macedonia, and they start preaching the gospel, and people start getting saved. Then the Bible says there was a slave woman that was actually a fortune teller, but she was a slave. And her master used to use her to make money. She was out there making money. She was out there working for the devil and making money for her master. And one day when Paul was preaching the gospel, this woman became annoying to him. Here's Paul trying to preach the message and some annoying woman over there, hey, the people are going. And kept, you know, just kept interrupting his sermon, kept interrupting what he was doing. And man, one day Paul just got so tired of it, he put his attention to her and he rebuked that foul spirit in the name of Jesus. He said, in the name of Jesus, calmate, calm down in the name of Jesus. And I rebuke every foul 
divisive spirit in you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. And the Bible says that the spirit left her, but all of a sudden the master got mad because that was his money. That's how he made his money. So he goes to the authorities at that time, and they got Paul and Silas, and they put him in jail. Now, they didn't only put him in jail. The Bible says that they locked them up in the stocks. In other words, you know what the stocks are, man. He would lock down legs and arms. And not only did they lock them up in stocks, they whipped them. They, they, they beat them and whipped them and beat them. So you can imagine what Paul and Silas was going. You think you go through trials. You imagine the trials they were going through. When's the last time you've been tied down and whipped? Well, I don't know. I'm in victory outreach. I don't know. That's what <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, then you say, when's the last time you've been tied down and whipped and give God the glory? Well, that's what Paul and Silas did. I mean, they were tied down. They were whipped. They were bleeding. And at midnight, boy, they, you know, you talk about going through it. They were very good. They were going. You think about being, uh, being, being, uh, being in bondage. You talk about, you know, you talk about the devil coming against you. Boy, the devil whipped them. The devil locked them up. The devil chained them down. The devil put them inside of a cell for doing a good thing, for preaching the gospel. But what did the Bible say? That about midnight, they were there locked down and all bleed up. And what did they do? They switch their mourning into joy. The Bible says that, man, they were there going through it. They were bleeding. They were, they were you know, going through some tough things. And what did they do? They switched their thoughts. I can imagine Paul and Silas were there. Well, what are we going to do? Well, what are we going to do? Well, the only thing that we can do, we're Christians. We got to turn this situation upside down. We got to turn this situation around. around. Instead of us, you know, you know, instead of us thinking of, of, of what we're going through, instead of thinking about our problem, instead of thinking about our trial, instead of thinking of what they did for us, let's put our attention on Jesus. Let's put our attention on God. And the Bible says they started singing to the Lord. They started worshiping Jesus. You know what's the first thing we need to learn? That whenever we go through things, instead of giving yourself to your trouble, instead of giving yourself to your pity party, instead of giving yourself to your sadness, go Switch your attention. Start worshiping. Start praising God. Start lifting up the name of Jesus. The Bible says that they switched their thoughts and they started to get a hold of Jesus. And when they started to get a hold of Jesus, all of a sudden things started to turn around for them, changing their mourning to joy. And sometimes, you know, it's not easy to go through mourning. I know that we all go through mourning, but when we go through mourning, don't stay in your mourning forever. The Bible says, though morning come in the night, joy comes in the morning. Don't spend too many nights mourning. The morning depends on how long you take mourning. Your trials and tribulations, you know, the, the time of your trial and tribulation depends on how long you want to go through it. I don't know about you. I don't like trials. I don't like tribulations. I don't like being sad. I don't like being miserable. I don't like to be frustrated. I don't like to be hurt. I don't like to be troubled. And because I don't like to be troubled, I don't like to be hurt, and I don't like to be miserable, I snap out of it in the name of Jesus. And I say, my God is bigger than any problem. My God is bigger than any need. My God is bigger than, my God is bigger than anybody. He's bigger than the devil, hallelujah. He's bigger than my enemies. Oh, God is big. And when I start to think that way, all of a sudden I get happy. I get joyful in the name of Jesus. My trial and tribulation, the, the, the time that my trial and tribulation decided to stay with me, it's all determined how much I decide to keep it. Well, when I get rid of it, I can get rid of it. When you want, listen to me, brothers and sisters, when you're going through trials and tribulations, I know it's not an easy thing, but how many of you guys want to get out of it? Some of us go through trials and tribulations, and you're sad, and you're miserable, and you're frustrated, and all this other stuff. One week goes by, you're still there. Another week goes Some of you have been at it for years. Wait now, you got to snap out of it. God has something for you. How many can say Hallelujah. See, we can't control the circumstances, but we can't control the way we respond to them. I can't control everything that happens. I can't control everything that comes my way. 
but I can control how I'm going to deal with it, how I'm going to respond to it, and I choose to give it to God. I fix what I can fix, and what I can't fix, I give it to Jesus. If there's a trouble, I'll try to work it out, but if I can't work it out, I'm not going to stress about it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to give it to Jesus. If there's a need, I'll try to meet the need, but if I can't meet the need, then I'm going to give it to Jesus because Jesus can meet every need. How many can say hallelujah? If I got an enemy, I'll try to work it out with that enemy, but if that enemy don't work it out, I'll give him to Jesus too. I'm not going to worry about what people think about me. I'm not going to worry about, pe- about what people say about me. What I'm going to worry is about what Jesus thinks about me. And what I'm going to worry is about, where is my relationship with God? I make you say hallelujah. You got to switch. We got to switch. We got to switch the mind. See, remember the devil, where does the devil's playground? Come on, grab a hold of your mind. I know some of us don't want to mess our hair up. <laughs> Wouldn't you? We're going to get radical for Jesus. You've got to change your mindset. What does the Bible say? As a man thinketh in his heart, as a man or woman thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think you're victorious, you're victorious. If you think you're blessed, you're blessed. If you think you're healed, you're healed. If you know that you're called, you're called. If you feel you're anointed and appointed, you're anointed and appointed. Whatever you think in your heart, so are you. You can say hallelujah. You got any single people in the house? Any single people in the house? How many of you guys ever want to have a good partner? You got to believe that God has the best for you. So quit going for seconds. Some of you go for saying, well, I don't think there's going to be anything else coming my way. No, the blessing is coming your way. As a man thinks in his heart, so is. You got to know I'm going to get the best because my God's going to give me the best because my God is the best. I got the best. As a man and woman thinks in the heart, so are they. We got any victorious people in the house? Listen, we need some victorious people going into 2024. How many of us want to do great things for God? How many, want, how many of us want God to do great things for us? Then we must learn to encourage ourselves in the Lord. How many can say hallelujah? hallelujah. You know, if you've been saved after two, three years, you're going to learn to encourage yourself in God. Now, I know baby Christians that are getting saved, you know, they've been saved for a few months. We've got to train them and teach them how to get a hold of God. But after we've been saved for a long time, we shouldn't need anybody to wind us up. I, you know, I don't need anybody to tell me to pray. I pray. I don't need anybody to tell me to read my Bible. I read my Bible. I don't need anybody to tell me to go to church. I come to church. I don't need anybody to tell me to treat my wife right. I treat my wife right. I don't need nobody to tell me to stay away from drugs. I stay away from drugs. I don't need nobody to tell me to stay away from drinking. I stay away from drinking. I don't need nobody to be telling me to quit gossiping and murmuring. No, I stop gossiping and, I'm, and I stop murmuring because I'm a man of God. I'm a Christian. That is what God has. That's what God, that's what God wants me to do. That's how God wants me to be. I have God in my life. Do you have God in your life? You know how you straighten out? You know how you straighten out your life when you know you have God with you? You know how you get those needs met when you know you have God with you? You know how you become that new creation in Christ Jesus when you know you have God inside of you? Does anybody have God inside of you? Then it's time to move on. Tell somebody, it's time to move on, man. I'm tired of the same old, same old, same old problem, same old need, same old spiritual level, same old this. I want to break loose. And I want everything. I just don't want all the good stuff. I want all the joy that God has for me. I want all the peace that God, I want all the anointing. I want all the victory that God has for me. That's how I feel. What about you? That's my spirit when I'm going to 2024. I'm going to break loose. I should tell Joe in the office, I don't know, man. Get ready, Joe. Come on, wake up, Joe. Come on, let's go because 2024 is going to be good. It's going to be, it's going to be good. (laughs) 
So if you come around me this year, don't come with me with all your problems, man. You're not going to get my little, especially if you've been around for a long time. Yeah. Otra vez, here we go again. Now, if you knew, we're going to be there. I won't be there for you. Now, you've been around after a few years, and you come with those sad stories of why you ain't going to church and why you ain't serving and that nobody loves you and nobody hurts you and they mistreated me. What's all in the club? You don't think I get mistreated? You think people don't talk about me? They don't talk about me. They've been talking about me all my life. <laughs> they talked about me when I wasn't a Christian. They talked to me when I was a Christian. They talked to, about me when I wasn't a leader. They talked to me when I was a leader. Before I was a pastor, I'm a pastor. I was talking to somebody at a party. I'm, either way I go, I'm not going to make everybody happy. There's probably people here this morning that you're probably not happy with me. But praise God, there's nothing I can do. The only thing I can do is I'm going forward for Jesus. And, and I hope that you come with me. I get over it, you get over it. I probably haven't been an angel, but neither have you. <laughs> There's always two sides of the coin. The thing is that you blab your side on Facebook and I can't do it. I can't say the other side because I'm a man of God. I'm a man that's got to hold it. Mm. Uh, mm. Boy, you don't think sometimes I like to give you my mind on that Facebook? Oh, yeah, but you don't know the other story. What about what you did? But I can't because I got God. Does anybody have God in this place? Anybody have God in this place? I'm just telling you, that's the kind of people it's going to take to go into this next year. I really believe God's going to do great things for us. But we're not going to do it. Doing the same old, same old. What's the saying? If you keep doing the same thing you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always had. Well, I don't want to, I'm not satisfied with what I have. Even though I'm content, God has been good. But I'm not sad. I want more. Does anybody want more in this place? Yeah. The more, 2024, don't you want more in 2024? More godliness, more righteousness, more anointing. Yeah, a little bit more money. That's not going to hurt. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe a little bigger house. Maybe a little nicer car. Praise God. Maybe some nice suits, you know? Some of you single, maybe have a wife this year. Maybe get a husband. But do it the right way. God is a God that wants to bless us. God is a God that wants to give us all that we need. But we got to learn to what? Overcome our trials. If we don't overcome our trials, we're going to stay in that same level. We're going to stay with that same mediocre spiritual life. No, we got to learn to overcome. Look at somebody say, you got to learn to overcome. We got to get over this problem. We got to get over this trial. And any couples, you couples, any couples in the house? You guys got to get over those little things that you go through. Not fighting and arguing, and hurting each other. Put the guns away, man. Put the knives. Away. <laughs> Learn to love one another in the Lord. You're saved, man. You got Jesus in side of you. Come to the seminar here with Pastor, Pastor Ziggy. has been married for over 50 something years. That guy is a war vet. I mean, that guy's been through some stuff. Let's come and receive from the Lord. How many can say hallelujah? So the first point, you got to turn your mourning into joy. It's a mindset. Second point is that we got to learn to bring God into our problems. What did Paul and Silas do? Say, man, we can't change the circumstances. The only we can do is we got to approach it in a different way. Let, let's draw close to God. They started to worship. The Bible says they started to pray, and they started to worship. They started to pray. They started to worship. How many know that whenever we pray and we worship, God's going to show up? The Bible says that if we draw nigh to God, God will always draw nigh, draw nigh to us. we got to learn to bring God into our problems. And the only way we bring God to our problems is that we got to pray during our trials. we got to pray during our hard times. we got to pray. And then we got to also start worshiping God and praising God. 
And the Bible says that when God sees that he's wanted, how many know that God is going to show up? You see, if we don't pray and we don't worship and we don't seek him, God's going to look at us and say, well, you really don't want me. You're going through something. Instead of going to God, you're out there complaining and murmuring. You're in a self-pity party. When you're in that kind of a stage, God says, man, you don't want to come to me. You don't want to trust me. You don't want my help. See, Paul and Silas could have just said, oh, could have, look at it. We're, we were serving God. We were just doing the right thing. And look at what's happening. Oh, God, don't love us. Oh, God, don't care. This is not right. This is not fair. This is not right what they're doing to us. This is not fair, Silas. Can you believe what they're doing? We were the righteous. We were doing something. They could have gotten into a big pity party, but they didn't. They called out to God. They cried out to God and think God let them down? No, whenever you go to God, God will show up. You got to bring God to your trial. You got to bring God to your problem. You got to bring God to your circumstance. And the only way that's going to happen is that we got to cry out to him. And we got to pray, especially when we're going through stuff. You know, when we're going through stuff is when we should be in church the most. When we're going through stuff is when we should pray the most. When we're going through stuff is when we should be in our word the most. You know that when you're going through stuff is when you should be closer to your pastor. You should be closer to the other pastors. You should be closer to the leaders. Don't isolate yourself. It's going to get worse. Don't stay far behind because it's going to get worse. No, when things get hard, run to God. Run to the altars. Run to Jesus. And when you run to Jesus, Jesus will show up. And that's what happened to these guys. They cried out to God, and God loved it. You see, whenever we go to God, God loves it. We have any fathers in the house? Come on, if your your father give Jesus a good hand. You know, when your children get scared and (coughs) they have problems and they go to you as a dad and they ask you for advice, doesn't that make you feel good? I know it makes me feel good. When my my kids come and ask me for something, it makes me feel good that I'm able to give it to them, that I'm able to bless them. And I'm a human father. I'm not perfect. Now, how much more our heavenly father that's in heaven? The Bible says that we were created in the image of God. That's why whenever we need something, when we go to him, he loves it. He likes it. He wants us to go to him. He don't want us to go to the devil for it. He don't want us to go to someone else for it. No, he's our God. How many know know that God's our God? He is our father. He is our savior. He He wants us to go to him. And the Bible says that they went to him, and God came and did great things for them. You see, all the great people in the Bible knew how to get a hold of God. We have any great people in the house? How many great people are ready to go into 2024? How many here are ready to experience the great blessings of 2024? You ready? Well, it's going to take some great people of faith that are going to be able to go into 2024 and do great things for God. How many can say hallelujah? I'm ready to be one. Are you ready to be one? Look at somebody and say, are you ready to be one? Well, then let's get with it, praise God. Let's give ourselves to Jesus. Whenever we have a prayer meeting, we should what? Should all be here praying, get a hold of God. When we have an an event going on, where should we be? We should all be here. Friday night, we're going to have Evangelist Ziggy coming and preaching Friday night service. Where are we going to be Friday night? We're going to be here. We got to, I'm going to have them preach a salvation message. So bring the unsaved so that they can give their lives over to Jesus. If you're a couple in the house, how many know that this Thursday night we should be what? Here in the presence of God, coming to God for our marriage. I think, uh, I think the report Joey gave me the other day, I think that all of our couples are coming out on Thursday night. I think, I think, they're, I think they're all coming out. And how many know that's a good thing? We want to have a healthy church. How many know we got to have healthy couples? We got to have healthy families. And that's why it's important that we be here, especially if we're going through it. If any couple's going through stuff, no, <laughs> come on. No, that's the way it should be. You're going through stuff, no. We got Jesus. We were, but we overcame it in Jesus. We gave ourselves over to Jesus. You know, I, I'm going to tell you that the, 
me and Gina are ready to celebrate 25 years, right? 25 years. We're going to renew our vows next year. Next year, 25 years. 25 years. And we've gone through stuff. We, we don't think we're not, you know, we're, we're not perfect. I don't say we're the perfect couple, but I know we have a good, great marriage. But one thing me and Gina learned, I, I can honestly tell you that we don't let our arguments and problems get out of hand. We, ha we have a line. There's just a boundary that we just do not cross. And whenever we get close to it, the fear of God comes. And the fear of God will hold us back. And you know, we don't stay mad over a night. We get mad during the day, but when the night comes, before we go to bed, let's straighten it out. Let's fix it. And I've, for years, even when I leave my house in the morning, if she's unhappy, I don't leave until she's happy. I sit there, no, no. You happy? No. You happy? No. <laughs> I'm not going to go until you're happy. First of all, because I love you. And then when I go out there, I want to have victory. I learned that if I don't take care of business with my wife, when I go out there, nothing goes well for me. And I don't have a good day. How many husbands understand what I'm saying? How many husbands went out to work and you know your wife is mad? Do you work comfortable? No. As a matter of fact, everything goes wrong. You're unhappy. The only way you're going to get that happiness and joy back, you got to go back to your wife and you got to make things right. How many can say hallelujah? You got to have a victory in your marriage, victory in your life. And that's what I'm talking about here this morning is let's go into a new year learning to be victorious. How about any single, we have any single people in the house? Amen, amen. Too loud, man. Single people don't like to be. They don't like to. They don't like to be singled out. That's why they're single. They don't want to be singled out. But I mean, we got to be some holy, righteous single people in the house. You know, I was single as a Christian for six years. Six years. You know, too, about five years. Six years after we got saved in the church. I was single for six years, just getting a hold of God, getting a hold of God. And let me tell you, I didn't get married till I was. Saved for six years, and, and don't think I didn't have girls come my way before those six years. I used to have them come my way since the beginning, but I said, no, 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 no. They used to bring me, during these seasons, they used to bring me salsa, and they would give me gifts. I go, no, 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 no. no I don't want to mislead you because you're not the right one. One of them actually told me, God said you were going to be my husband. I go, I don't know what kind of God you're serving, but... <laughs> He hasn't told me anything. Because God said you're going to be. <laughs> I go, the God didn't say anything to me. I got to wait till God speaks to me. I need, I need God because I don't want to blow it anymore. I know what it is to have ungodly relationships. I know what it is to be with the wrong partner. I know what it is trying to be with the wrong partner. I don't want to be with the wrong partner. I want to be with the right partner. And if it's going to take for me to wait, I'll wait. If it's going to take for me to wait, i wait. If it's going to take me to say no to everything that's not of you, I'm going to say no. If it's going to take me to get a hold of God until the right one comes, so be it. And I thank God that I waited upon him because I'm going to do little Manuel Padilla's number. I got the best wife than anybody else. <laughs> little Manuel's not here this morning. He's with his daughter, visiting his daughter, but his spirit, I guess, is still here. He's probably watching us online. Yeah, he thinks he has the best one. No, I have the best one. I think every husband in the house say, no, I have the best one. Come on, is there any husbands that can say, if you're a husband that say you got the best one, go ahead and stand. And say, I got the best one. So make sure you bring her Thursday night. We'll see it. Let's see if she listens. Let's see if she's the best one. <laughs> Let's see if she obeys. <laughs> Point three, when God shows up, things happen. Man, they cried out to God. They got hold of God. Did God let them down? No, the Bible says that when God showed up, boy, he shook the ground. 
And the Bible says that when he shook the ground, that all the bondages were broken. Not only the bondages that had Paul and Silas shackled down, even the bondages that had all those other jail, all those other prisoners also broke. I mean, they got a hold of God so, so strong that the power of God came, shook the jail, their chains broke, and even all the prisoners that were in there, the Bible says that their doors were open wide, and they were all free. You know, what that, you know what, why that happened? It's because the anointing of God was so strong that it broke many bondages. How many guys would love to carry the anointing like that? How many guys would like to be part of a church with anointing like that? Don't we call ourselves the house of miracles? Do we believe this is the house of miracles? Do we believe this is still the house of miracles? Do we believe that God is still performing miracles today? See, some Christians believe miracles were only for the back in those days, but we don't believe that. We believe God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. How many know that God still heals the sick today? How many know God, God still delivers people that are in bondage today? How many know that God still takes demons out of people? So how could you say that miracles don't exist today? Listen, I'm a walking miracle here today. How about you? Are you a walking miracle? Don't ever tell me that God does not do miracles today. If you only knew the life that I lived, if you only knew the mind that I used to have, if you only knew the heart that I used to have, it's only a miracle that stands before you here this afternoon, this morning. And some of you, you ain't no different. I've seen how some of you came out. I've seen how some of you came. I mean, the only thing I didn't know what was, I mean, God, if you don't keep that girl, I don't know what's going to keep that girl. God, if you don't change that man, I don't know what's going to change that man. Some of you, I thought you weren't even going to last. Some of you guys, where's Jonathan? Jonathan, we just prayed for him to be a pastor. He's a, he passed his license. He, he's a licensed minister for the Ministry of Victory Outreach. When he got to the home there with Pastor Arturo, I'm going to tell you, man, Jonathan, he's, you know, he has these thick old glasses like that, and his eyes were woo, 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 woo. And he wouldn't talk. I, hey, how you doing? What's your name? Where are you from? His eyes would just roll. I remember I said, God, Arturo, I remember talking, Arturo, what's wrong with that guy? You're, I don't think he's all there, bro. I told Arturo, I, don't, I, mean, I told Arturo, I don't think that guy's going to make it, Arturo. That's a guy that's muy pasado. That guy, he is way out there. I think the drugs really did a number on him, boy. I don't know if he's going to make it back because his mind is so gone. But that's what I thought. But look at what God thought. Look at what God did with that man. So don't tell me that God is not a God that does miracles. He still does miracles today. But what is it going to take for those miracles to come to pass? We, we need to bring an anointing. We got to get this church all anointed. That's why we just can't be a dead, quiet church. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You know, whenever the Spirit showed up upon the disciples, look at here. The Bible says when the Spirit showed up in the jail, the jail what? Shook. Yeah, I mean, God's radical. When the disciples received the Spirit in the upper room, what the Bible says, it was like a rushing wind. You know, when people walk into this house, they got to walk and say, I don't know, but there's something in the air here. There's something going on. They got to feel the anointing and the power of God. How does the anointing come? Well, we got to be people that seek God. And we got to be a people that live right. Say with me, live right. Look at somebody say, we got to start living right, man. That's all right to come in, you know, all sinners and chaos. It's all right. But after a while, you need to get saved. You need to get delivered. You need to become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has got to go and the new has got to come. Some of us were overdue. You've been here a long time and you're still living that crazy life. Look, at it's time for you to cross the line. It's time for you to give yourself to Jesus, to really give yourself to Jesus and become that new creation that God wants you to become. Because God wants to anoint you 
God wants to give you favor so that you can go out and be a blessing to others. Does anybody want to be a blessing to others? And the anointing is important because only through the anointing the devil flees. I know that when the anointing of God is here, the devil flees. The devil don't like to be under the anointing of God. That's why when people come, they're either going to give themselves to the anointing or they're going to run from the anointing. There's only two things you can do. The Bible says that Jesus is the rock. He is the solid rock. You know, upon uh, some of them, that rock is going to crush them. It's going to judge them. It's going to deal with them in a severe way. Because you can't get away from God. The Bible says that the day is going to come that every knee and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The ones that love him and even the ones that hate him. You know that even the devil himself, the, God, the biggest God-hater of all, the biggest God-hater of all that's going to be in the lowest, hottest part of the pit of hell, even he, even though he don't like God, and even though he is going to be in the hottest place of hell, even he's going to have to kneel down and say, mm, mm, Jesus is Lord. He is God. And there's going to be people that reject God, that even though they say, God don't exist, God is not real, God is not alive, oh, it's a lot of phone, it's a lot of brainwashing, even you one day are going to have to kneel. <laughs> Everything I said was not true, God, he is the king of kings, and he is the Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. The Bible says he's the rock. Some of them, he's going to just crush but the Bible says some of, them, some of us are going to stumble over the rock. We stumble. You're saved right here. You stumbled over the rock. You were living your life of sin, and then one day you just broke. Hallelujah. One day you just said, God, I need you. God, forgive me. God, I've sinned. You're going to stumble over the rock, and you're going to fall in the feet of Jesus. And you're going to cry out to Jesus. There's some of us here this morning. You've been coming for a while. And you got to stumble against that rock. You got to kneel yourself to God. You got to humble yourself to God. You got to give your life over to Jesus so that Jesus can bring a genuine salvation to your life. And some of you have halves. You know, we have half half Christians, lukewarm Christians. You're here, but at home you live like a devil. Right here you say sweet words amongst us, but at home you speak like the devil. You treat your wife good at church, but at home you treat her like... It's what they call half-halves. You're half there and you're half there. You know the half-halves ain't going to get away? Jesus said, I'd rather have you Luke, I'd rather have you hot or cold, but not lukewarm. Jesus is not into half and halves. He says, I'd rather have you here or I'd rather have you there. Let your yay be yay or let your nay be nay. Either you're a Christian or you're not, but you can't be in the middle. And if you're in the middle, you're not going to stay in the middle too long. Something's going to happen that's either going to push you this way or it's going to push you that way. I don't know what that thing is going to happen, but when that thing happens, it will come. Whatever that thing is, I pray that you go to the right way. Go to Jesus' side. Humble yourself in the presence of the almighty God and get it right, man. Tell somebody, this is the year of getting it right. 2024 is the year. How many guys want the anointing of God? How many guys want the power of God? You need to get right, man. Men, women in the home, quit playing games. You got to get right with God. You young people, quit playing with the world. You got to get right with God. You need the anointing of God upon your life. Victory outreach in Imperial Valley, this is not a time to be shaky, shaky and slow, slow and mediocre. No, this is a time that we get 100% committed to the work of God and the mission that God has given us. How many know that God has given us a mission to take the world for Jesus? That is our mission. That is our vision. So tell somebody, speed it up, man. Speed it up. It could be the speed up year, too. It's time to speed it up. 
we've been going at that 40, 50. It's time to start hitting 100, 120. Let's get a Holy Ghost ticket. Let's get in the Holy Ghost. Go forward for Jesus so we can say hallelujah. We need the anointing, guys. We need the anointing. We need the power of God. We need to live right. We got to pray. We got to commit ourselves to God. And we got, you know, part of getting committed to church, come to all the churches that you can. You know, it's okay to be here. So I, I, I always tell you people, at least come Sunday mornings. But then after a while, start coming. Go to a life group Wednesday. After that, start coming to Fridays. After that, start coming to events. After that, go, go all the way in. Don't they sing that song? Ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. Say it with me. Ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. See, when you first come in, you come ankle deep. You're not all committed, but you're there. As you keep going forward, then you get weight. You go into the deeper water. You're, you're starting to do things. But when, then you, when you go all the way in and say, it's not my life anymore. You know, all the way in, you don't live your life anymore. It's about God. It's not what I want, but what does God want? See, way steep, you can still do what you want to serve God. Ankle deep, you can still do what you want to serve God. But when you're all the way in, say whatever you want, God. You want me to come to church more? Whatever you want. You want me to start tithing and giving? Whatever you want. You want me to give above my tithing and giving? You want me to give you that $10,000 check, Lord? Whatever you want. 40,000, God, here it goes. You want my 100,000, Lord? It's all the way in. You want my house? The only thing is, don't tell him, you want my wife? Take him. Yeah, you, know, you want my husband, Lord? Take him. <laughs> That's the only thing that sticks with you. You want me to go take that city? You want me to take a city? You want me to leave it all and go start a church? Victory Outreach is an outreach. We're a launching ministry. And let me tell you, let me prophesize for you, and let me give you a word to Victory Outreach in Prio Valley. It's time that we go out to the deep. Yeah. Some of you, I know you love me, and you tell me, I want to be with you, Pastor. I want to be with you, Pastor, but I don't want you to be with me. I mean, thank you for the gesture. I, I want to be with you till we die. But I don't want you to be with me till I die. I'd rather, you want know, to be honest with you? I prefer that when I die, all you guys are taking cities and we have new leaders here. That's what I prefer. I prefer that you be out there fulfilling your dream. If that's what God called you to do. Now, if God didn't call you to go, don't go. But if God did call you to go, don't be afraid not to go. You got to go to the deep. Are we ready to go to the deep? Yeah. Ready to go to the deep? I'm, I'm ready to go to the deep. I'm ready to take you. See, that's why I'm kind of preaching. You gotta, we're going to go to the deep. We're going to go to the deep. We're going to go to the deep. We're going to trust and believe that this church is going to get where God wants it to get. How many can say hallelujah? Yeah. And the last point I have for you is that the reason it's very important that we learn to go through trials and tribulations. Listen. Paul and Silas, man, went to the deep. They learned to go through trials and tribulations. The anointing of God came upon them. Many bondages were broken. Many people got saved. They, you know, they, they were able to expand the kingdom of God. Because of what they went through, they were able to establish churches, all because they learned to go through trials. But also learning to go through trials and learning to get to victory. And Jesus, were able to help others. Only through our victory are we able to help others get to victory. Anybody want to help others get the victory? Amen. Well, you can't help someone else get the victory if you don't got the victory. You got to get the victory. What's Victory Outreach's name? Victory what? Outreach. Say with me, what? Outreach. Victory? Outreach. Outreach. Even our name says it. Get the victory first. Get saved. Get delivered. Get right with God. And then after you get right with God, you get a victory. Go and reach somebody. Win somebody for Jesus. That's what Paul and Silas did. They got the victory, and they were able to go reach somebody for Jesus. The Bible says that because of their victory and their anointing, everyone in that jail got blessed, that the doors were open, 
And look at what happened. The Bible says as soon as the jailer found out that they were gone, he was ready to kill himself. Now, why was the jailer, the guard, ready to kill himself? Because he knew back then. You got to read the story. We read it. The Bible says that when they put the jailer to watch over them, they said, you better make sure you really take care of these prisoners, especially this Paul and Silas. You better watch them that nothing happens and that they don't get away. You see, the jailer was ready to kill himself because the penalty back then, if you were a jailer and you were a guard, you were a warden, and those prisoners got, got escaped under your watch, they would kill you. You had to give your life for it. They would hang you for it. So that jailer goes, man, they're gone. They escaped. Not only did Paul and Silas escape, the whole prison escaped. There is no hope for me. He got a sword and he was ready to kill himself. But Paul ran in and said, no, 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 don't kill yourself. We're all still here. And the Bible says when the jailer saw him and he recognized everything that had happened, he seen the jail shake. He seen all these people who get released. And most of all, he saw, he saw how Paul's love and mercy came back for them. He goes, man, there must be a God. Oh, Paul, introduce me to the God that you know. The Bible says that Paul preached to him. He got saved. Paul said, believe in Jesus Christ and you and your whole family should get saved. He believed in Jesus and the Bible says that his whole family family gets saved. Why is it important that we live in victory? Why is it important that we get the victory in Christ? Listen, that's what's going to save our families. That's what's going to save our cities. That's what's going to save our friends. How many here want to see your family get saved? You want to see your kids get saved? You want to see your city get saved? You got to have the victory in Jesus. Don't let the devil or any trial or tribulation take you out. Because God wants to use us. How many, of us, how many of us want to see God use us as a church in 2024? Amen. Well, we need some victorious, anointed people. You ready to get victorious? Amen. You ready to get too anointed? And let me tell you something before we close here. Let me tell you, when the spirit and the anointing and the revival of God comes, there might be a shaking of the tree. There might be a cleansing of the house. But it's okay. Say with me, it's okay. It's all right. See, when the spirit of God comes upon you, what does the spirit do? It starts cleaning you up. Then it brings you excitement. Then it makes you into a powerful witness. What happens when anointing and the spirit come upon it? I want the piano player to come. What happens when the spirit and anointing come upon a church? It does the same thing. It cleans up. It raises people up. It changes people. Fire of God. When the fire comes, it burns. What does the fire do? It starts to purify. It starts to cleanse. So as we get ready to go into 2024, we might go through things. Things might happen. There might be trials. I'm starting to see it already, but I'm good with it because I know what happens. I, I, I've been through these seasons before. I know that whenever God is going to move and do great things, there's trials and there's tribulations. I know there's times of testing. I know things start to happen. People come in. People go. I understand how it goes. I understand how it happens. But you know what? I know that God, through it all, God is going to move and God is going to do some great things. And I'm ready for whatever God is going to do. How about you? Are you ready here? It's getting quiet in the house. God's already dealing with some of you. Some of you are saying he's come, but I can still feel the resistance. I feel a lot of resistance here. Some of you have been ankle deep for a long time. Some of you have been waist deep for a long time. Some of you guys, God's calling the deep, and there's a lot of resistance in the house, but I thank God for it. I know it's going to happen, but we're going to break out of it. Oh, I expected this resistance. I'm your pastor. I've been here for 20 years. You think I don't know where we're at? You think I don't know where we came from? You don't think I don't know where we're at? You think I don't know where we got to go? Oh, I know where we got to go, and I know there's going to be a lot of resistance, but I'm ready for it. My belt is tightened up. I'm ready. You ready? We're here. We're in this building already. No more buildings for us, my friend. The only thing left for us is start launching our churches. It's getting quiet in the house. Some of you are going to get launched out. Some of you are going to get kicked out. Yeah. Some of you get ready, you're going to get kicked out. Because I know that's the only way God's going to get you out. Some of you, you're going to go through unnecessary trials. 
God's going to make your life very uncomfortable. God is going to make your life very uncomfortable. And to you fall to your knees and say, God, what must I do? You ever read the early church? God wanted them to reach the world. They got all comfortable in Jerusalem. They all wanted to stay there with the disciples and the apostles. And the Lord let persecution come. And when the persecution came, they ran. And that's how churches started off. Now, I prefer to go willingly. How about you? I prefer to go willingly. I don't want God to allow persecution to come my way. I say, I want to go willingly. I want everybody to stand. I want the band to come up. I wasn't going to make an altar call because we're having Holy Communion, but I am going to make an altar call. And I want to make an altar call for some of you that you know you've got to go to another level. Now, I don't, I'm not expecting you all right now to go to the deep. I'm not expecting you all to go to the deep. But I am expecting you to go one level, to go one level higher. Some of you guys have been here for a while. You need to start going ankle deep. What's ankle deep? You need to get saved. You need to give your life over to Jesus. You need to become a Christian. You've been here, but you haven't accepted Christ. If you haven't accepted Christ, you're ankle deep. You need to come and accept Christ. You need to give your life over to Jesus. If you're not saved, you need to get saved today. Then you got the waist deep, guys, girls. The waist deep is when you start making a commitment. You know what? I'm going to be in church more often. I'm going to start to tithe. I'm going to start to give. I'm going to start to come to more services. Whatever the church is doing, that's what I'm going to do. I'm wasting. I got to get to wasting. And then what's all the way in? All the way in where you say, it's not my will. Not my will done, but let the Lord's will be done. And I think there could probably be one or two in here that probably, I know you. I know maybe about two or three that say, you know what, I, I, I'm ready to. And this is not trying to say, I gave my life waist deep when I was a baby Christian. I didn't go ankle. I didn't go waist. Really? I said, God, whatever. I did, boy, whatever it is. That's why I stopped smoking. I stopped drinking. I stopped playing around. I, I, didn't, I didn't date girls that I wasn't serious with. I didn't play with my sister's hearts or emotions. I didn't play games. I gave myself all the way in right from the beginning. Some of you here, some of you men and women in the home, you could probably do that today. I did it when I was in the home. I went all the way, whatever. That's why when I got out of the home, I told Pastor, what do you want? David, what do you want to do? Pastor, what do you want me to do? I said, Pastor, I want you to do this. What do you want me to do? I want you to go here. I want you to go there. I went all the way in in the beginning. And it's all been good. God has not let me down. He still gave me a great wife. He still gave me great kids. He's provided for me. God became my boss. And he has not let me so if some of you say, you know what, I'm ready for that. Even if he calls me to pack up and take the city, I'm here. Whatever God has for me. So whatever level it is, I do pull out a plea to you. Go to the next level. Whatever that level might be for you. As the band sings, let's come to the altars. And as you come, you know the level you need to go to. You cry out to God. You ask God to help you. You ask God, God, I need you, God.